All right, so here is the test review. Um, it says, write and define variables, write the system of inequalities, find the minimum and maximum values, answer the questions. A snack bar cooks and sells hamburgers and hot dogs during football games. To stay in business, it must sell at least 10 hamburgers, but cannot cook more than 40. It must also sell at least 30 hot dogs, but cannot cook more than 70. The snack bar cannot cook more than 90 items total. The profit on a hamburger is 33 cents, and the profit on a hot dog is 21 cents. How many of each item should the snack bar sell to maximize to make the maximum profit? So we're talking about how many. So that's going to be the number of, and we have hamburgers and hot dogs. So we'll say X is the number of hamburgers made. And Y will be the number of hot dogs made. All right, for our first equation, it says to stay in business, it must sell at least 10 hamburgers. So at least is going to be X is greater than or equal to 10. The next one says, but cannot cook more than 40. So X is um, less than or equal to 40. From here we have our next one. It must also sell at least 30 hot dogs. So Y is greater than or equal to 30. At least is greater than or equal to. And the last one is, or the second last one is, but cannot cook more than 70. So Y is less than or equal to 70. And my final equation the snack bar cannot cook more than 90 items total. So X plus Y is less than or equal to 90. And last, we have our objective function here. So the profit, so that's where we know that word profit, on a hamburger is 33 cents. So 33 cents would be 0.33 X for high hamburger. And the profit on a hot dog is 21 cents, so plus 0.21 y is equal to pr profit now um, in terms of the scale if you notice everything's going by tens pretty much so we're going to go 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90. um actually that's a little small so we'll go by fives let's try that so let's go with 5 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. And same thing here, 10, 20, so I'm skipping because that's the fives. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, and 90. Okay, so now we'll just graph each one. So we're starting with our blue line. X is greater than or equal to 10. So vertical line. And we have that one there. And we're just going to point an arrow going in that direction because this is the shading region. For my next one, it is X is less than or equal to 40. So another solid line. So we can see that our shaded region is here. So right now it's in the center. For my next one, Y is a horizontal line greater than or equal to 30. And now I see it's greater than, so it's above. So I don't really, it's, this part is not necessary because it's not a part of the solution set. And for the next one, Y is less than or equal to 70. So now hopefully you see that it's inside here now. And last, we have this orange or red equation. So all we have to do is actually just subtract the x. So y is less than or equal to negative x plus 90. So we start at 90. If we go down 10 and over 10, that's actually 1, because 10 divided by 10 is 1. So down 10 over 10. And you just continue that all the way through here. And I'm going to draw the dots, but I'm only going to connect the part of the line that I actually need. Um, I guess I can do it all. Okay, and that is less than or equal to. So my 
shaded region where my solution set is is going to be inside here. So we have all of this here now. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our vertices. Our first one is at 10 and 30. Our second one is at 10 and 70. So I'll darken these in. So there's one there, one there. So 10 and 70. Our next one is at 20 and 70. The next one is right here at 40, 30. And our last one is at 40, 50. All right, so let's just double check this. 10, 30, 10, 70, 20, 70, and so on. Okay, so we're good there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going, I might have to move this over, but we're gonna plug these into our objective function. So 0.33 times 10 plus 0.21 times 30. So yeah, let's move this one over. So 40, 50, I'm just gonna move right over here. And this one is going to equal. Now I'm just gonna set up each one real quick. So 0.33, this one is 10, this one is 20, this one is 40, now 0.21, this is 70, 70, 30, and then over here, this last one for 40, 50, we have 0.33 times 40 plus 0.21 times 50. Um, so I don't make mistakes, I'm just going to plug it into the calculator real quick. Alright, so for our first one, 0.33 times 10 plus 0.21 times 30. Um, so we have 9.6. So that's 9.6. Um, for my next one, I'm just going to scroll up here. So it is 10 and 70, uh, so 18. For my next one, we have 20 and 70, and it's just 21.3. My next one is 40 and 30 which is 19.5. Then over here we have 40 and 50, which gives me 23.7. All right, so out of all these answers, my minimum one, it looks like it appears to be 9.6. And my maximum one is 23.7. So how many of each item should the snack bar sell to make the max profit? What's well, gonna be this one right here. So it's 40 hamburgers and 50 hot dogs to maximize their profit there. All right, for the next ones here. Determine whether each ordered pair is a solution. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these points, like so three, remember this is X, this is Y. We're gonna plug them in over here, we're gonna plot the points. So one, two, three, and one. That falls in the double shaded region, or the triple shaded region, so that is the solution. All right, for my next one, I'll use this green. Two comma three, one, two, one, two, three. It's on a solid line right next to the double shaded region, so we're gonna say yes, that is a solution. All right, for my next one, we have one comma two. So if you go one, one, two, it falls on this intersection of the three lines, but since you have a dashed line, it cannot satisfy that. So this would not be a solution. And my last one is three, zero, one, two, three. It falls on the dashed line that's next to the double shaded region, but since it's a dashed line, it cannot satisfy it. So the answer is no. All right, on to numbers three, four, and five. 
So for the first one, it says write each system in standard form, write the augmented matrix, state the dimensions, and solve the system. Well here I can already see there's three rows and there's one, two, three, four columns. So this is gonna be a three by four matrix. Now X, Y, Z constant, X, Y, Z constant, X, Y, Z constant. So it's already in standard form. So we have our coefficients three, four, two, and negative nine. Negative two, two, five, and 16. Negative one, two, negative seven, and negative seven. And now we put this into the calculator here. So I'm gonna do second matrix, go to edit. It's at three rows by four columns. Now I'm just gonna plug in the numbers. Make sure you do press negative nine and not minus nine. Negative seven, negative seven, all done. So we quit out of it. Second matrix, go to math, RF. Second matrix, enter, enter. And we come up with this right here. Um, if your answers are decimals, great. If they're fractions, let me show you how to do this in the calculator. So to get it out of a fraction, here's what I, or to get it into a fraction, I do second zero. So second zero is the catalog. Um, I'm looking for fractions, so you can scroll down here and you will get to F. There's actually a quicker way. Um, if you look at the letters here, this button costs the cosine, says F right there, so I press that, it takes me straight to F. Then I'm just looking for fraction. Um, and we have right there, fraction. Not fraction, answer, just frac. So I hit enter there, enter again, and now it's gonna convert everything to a fraction for me. I like that easier, because it's easier for me to write. So negative 77 over 19. We have zero and 30 over 19. So there you go, there's that problem there. All right, let's move on to number four. So three rows again, and I have one, two, the Z is missing here, which is still three and four. So I still have a three by four matrix. X, Y, no Z constant, X, Y, Z constant, X, Y, Z constant. So this one is good to go, it's already in standard form. So I have four, negative two, zero, since there's no Z value, two. Um, for the second row, five, negative two, one, and seven. Three, four, negative one, because that's the coefficient, and three. All right, now matrix-wise, I don't like to start like this, so I do second plus seven, one, two, clears the calculator for me. And now I just start over doing the matrix. Second matrix, edit, it's three rows. So it's three rows by four columns, and I start here, just plugging these numbers in. Quit it, matrix, edit, go to RF, second matrix on A, enter, enter, and we get X is one, Y is one, Z is four. So we have one comma one comma four as my solution set. All right, now for the last problem here, number five, um, it is not in standard form. Um, so what I'm gonna change this first into standard form. So I try to move all the variables to the left and constants to the right. So keep three X here, we're gonna add the two Y over and there's no Z and there's no constant, so it's zero. For this one here, I'm gonna subtract X I'm going to subtract 16y. The z is negative 3z, and it's on this side, so it stays here. And if I were to subtract the 8, it would be minus 8 over here, so negative 8. Over here, I add the 2x to bring it to the left side. I'm going to reorder it so that y is next, so negative 4y. Positive z. And the last thing I need to do is take this negative 2 and move it over, so if I undo it, I would add it to the other side, and it becomes positive 2. Um, now I can see there are three rows by one, two, three, four columns. So it's another three by four matrix. Write my augmented matrix here. Um, three, two, no Z value, so that's zero. Negative one, negative 16, negative three, negative eight, two, negative four, one, and two. And then I put in the calculator. 
Oh, you know what? Let's cast this turn real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear our calculator here. Let's see. Okay, so second matrix. Three by four. After I type in all my numbers, let's go to matrix and do R ref. So we have this. Uh, once again, I'll make it a fraction. So second zero brings up my catalog. I press the letter F under cosine and find the word frac for fraction. There you go. And here are our answers. We have, looks like negative two over 47. We have three over 47 and 110 over 47. Hopefully I plugged all that in correctly. It looks like I did, so you can definitely double check that. If you have questions, feel free to ask. All right, next problems. So for the next page here, we're going to graph the system of inequalities. Um, so right here, number six, um, it's already set up, it's already solved for y, so the first one I'll do in purple. So my y-intercept is positive one, so that's where I begin on the y-axis. And my slope, I put it two over one, so up two, right one. And I just follow that pattern all the way through, and then down two, left one. Dash line, because there's no equal bar. And we shade greater than, so we shade above. For the next equation, put this one in the green. So we start, our y-intercept is positive two. My slope is negative one, so negative one divided by positive one, so down one, right one. Up one, left one to go backwards. And that's another dashed line because there's no equal bar. And this one is less than, so it's shaded below. So our double shaded region is right here. I don't need to shade over here because I only shade where the solutions are. And for the last one, do it in red. We start at positive four, one, two, three, four. And my slope is three over one. So up three, one, two, three, right one. One, two, three, right one, down three, left one. One, two, three, Left one, one, two, three, left one. One, two, three, left one. And this is a solid line. And this one is shaded above. So above is this way. So my triple shaded region is right here. And any point here would be the solution set. On the dashed lines, no. Solid lines, yes. All right, for the second one, I'll probably do this one and I will just show you the solves for number seven, but or number eight, you can work that one out. Um, for this one here, in order to solve for y, you would subtract the two x. So y is greater than or equal to negative two x minus two. So we start at negative two, to make it a fraction, put it over one, so down two, right one. Backwards is up two, left one to make this slope. Solid line because there's equal to. And you shade greater than or equal to, so you shade above. All right, for this next one here, um, we're gonna do, we're gonna subtract the x. And to isolate the y, because that's to be positive, we divide by negative one. And hopefully you recall when you divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality. So there I'm circling so we can actually see it's a one, two, three. And we go up one, right one, because the slope is positive one over one. And this is a dashed line. And it says it's shade above. 
All right, for our last equation, um, for this one, we are going to subtract the 4x. I'm gonna do that right off the bat here. So negative y is less than negative 4x. Divide by negative one, because that y should be positive. y is greater than 4x. So we start at zero, we go up four. One, two, three, four, right one. One, two, three, four, right one. Down four. One, two, three, four, left one. One, two, three, four, left one. And that is going to be a dashed line. And this one is greater than, so we shade above. And our y-intercept was zero, that's why I need to start at the origin. And there you go, there is your solution set in here on the solid line, not the dashed lines. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, number eight, let me just write them down for you real quick. So for the first one, it's already done. So this one's a little tough to graph on this small graph, but I will give it a shot. So up to right one, down to left one. Okay, it is a dashed line. And it is less less than so we shade below. Um, let's see the next one. Do this one in blue. Color coded for you. This is green. So this one I would have to add the 2x. So y is greater than 2x plus 5. So this is 4, this is 5. Um, we go up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. Backwards is down to left one. So it looks like these lines are actually parallel. One, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, two. So here's this one. This is another dashed line. So they're really close. They're not touching at all, actually. And this one is greater than, so we shade to this way. And at this point here, I know the answer is actually going to be a no solution. And the reason why I know that is because there are three lines, three inequalities, and only two of them will intersect. This one will probably intersect with this one and this one, but not all three together. But we'll see. Uh, four, five, six, slope is up two, right one, down two, left one. Maybe I spoke too early. Let's see, one, two, left one. I'm just going to keep following this pattern. Solid line. And this one, it says y is greater than, so we shade above. So you see here, two of them intersect, but not all three intersect in a place, so that is a no solution. All right, number nine uh, is a word problem. It says... You want to work at least 10 hours, but less than 20 hours next week. You earn $8 per hour working at a convenience store and $6 per hour mowing lawns. You need to earn at least $96 to cover your weekly expenses. Write and graph a system of linear inequalities to model the situation. All right, let's define our variables first. So we have X is the, uh, I guess, number of hours you're working at a convenience store. And the Y would be the number of hours you are mowing lawns. So number of hours mowing lawns. And then for my equations now. Um, first equation, we'll call this equation one. Um, you want to work at least 10 hours. So you do so many hours of uh, working at the convenience store plus so many hours mowing lawns and you want to work at least, which is greater than or equal to 10 hours. So that's my first equation. Uh, my second one, equation two. But you want to work less than 20 hours. So x again plus y is less than 20, but less than 20 hours next week. For your next one, 
you earn $8 per hour working at a convenience store and $6 per hour mowing lawns. So equation three is um, 8x plus 6y, and you need to earn at least $96, so greater than or equal to 96. All right, from here, we're gonna graph these. So let's start with this green one here. Um, all we do is we subtract x, so y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 10. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we go down one, right one. Solid line. All right, next one will be my blue line. Once again, we just subtract the x, so y is less than negative x plus 20. So if this was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so it goes one off, and we go down one, right one. So what that means is these are parallel lines, which means they will never intersect. So let's see what the solution set is in one moment. After I finish this up. So that is equal to, or less than, so dashed. And then my last one is this pinkish one. So first we're gonna subtract 8x. So 6y is greater than or equal to negative 8x plus 96. Divide everything by six. Y is greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 96 would be 16. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, we go down four, one, two, three, four, right three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. All right. And from here, this is going to be a solid line because it is equal to. Sorry, it's not the greatest graph. Um, and shadings. So this one, the green one is shaded above. The blue line is shaded below. So right now it's in between the blue and the green line. And the last one says greater than or equal to. So my solution set actually falls anywhere between these two lines. But we don't use negative numbers, so just be careful there. All right, down to our last two problems here. So the first one is number 10. Um, there's not really a lot of space here to do everything I need to, but I'll see if I can make it work. Um, the juice bar at a health club receives a delivery of juice at the beginning of each month. Over a three month period, the health club received 1200 gallons of orange juice, 900 gallons of pineapple juice, and 1000 gallons of grapefruit juice. This table shows the compositions of each juice every day. How many gallons of juice did the health club receive? So we have um, X, Y, and Z. So X could be the number of gallons of orange juice. Uh, X, Y could be the number of gallons of pineapple. and pineapple juice. And then Z could be the number of gallons of grapefruit. All right, so from here, we write our equations. Now, once again, this is a table. The only difference is um, it's, in per, it's in percentages, but we need decimals, so Really, what you do is you can divide each one of these by 100 or take the decimal and move it two to the left. So we know that each one of these is gonna equal, so the first one, 12, uh, 1,200 gallons of orange juice, so this is gonna equal 1,200. Um, 900 gallons of pineapple juice, this will equal 900. And 1,000 gallons of grapefruit, so this is gonna equal 1,000. So first, I'm gonna take 70% and convert it to 0.7 and multiply that by x plus 50% move it two to the left, which is 0.5y, plus 0.3z equals 1,200. 
and we just keep going. So move this 2 to the left, so 0.2x plus 0.3y plus 0.3z is equal to 900. And then 10% uh, of, so 0.1x plus 0.2y plus 0.4z equals 1000. All right, from here you can make your augmented matrix, which is what you should probably do. So 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 1200. So now I'm just filling them in. And there it is. So now the last one to do is it says, how many gallons of juice did the health club receive in each delivery? All right, so let's turn this on, clear this. All right, and now we just plug in our numbers. So first one, so second matrix, edit, three by four, um, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 1200. Quit out of it, second mode, math, RF, second matrix, A, and we get another fraction here. Let me see, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 1200, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 900, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 1000. Let me just double check my numbers here. So we do have 0 0.7. 0.2, ah, that's a 0.1 there. So gotta be careful with those small mistakes. You can notice I put a zero there instead of 0.1. So let me check the rest of this. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 1,000. Okay, so that should fix that there. So the second matrix, RF, second matrix, enter, enter. And there we go, 300. So 300 is my orange juice, so 300 pounds of OJ, orange juice. Um, we have 750 pounds of pineapple juice. And then we have 2,050 pounds of grapefruit juice. Okay, so now we're down to the last problem. Um, a produce store sells three different fruit baskets containing strawberries, pears, and oranges. One pound of each fruit costs six fifty. Um, two pounds of oranges, one pound of strawberries, and two pounds of pears cost ten dollars eighty five cents. Three pounds of pears, four pounds of oranges, and two pounds of strawberries cost eighteen dollars six cents. Use a graphing calculator to determine the price per pound of each item. So once again, you go through the steps. You define the variables. So x, y. And Z, um, X would be the price per, and I just usually do in the order, price per strawberries in pounds. Price per pounds of pears. Price per pounds of oranges. Now we write our equations. Um, so one pound of each fruit costs $6.50. $6 so x plus y plus z is equal to six dollars and fifty cents two pounds of oranges um, so be careful your oranges is z so that's positive two z so two pounds of oranges plus one pound of strawberries so that is x and two pounds of pear so two y and that's going to cost us ten dollars and eighty five cents so be careful there notice they were not in the order like i actually wrote them out here and from the last equation, three pounds of pears, which is y. So three pounds of pears plus four pounds of oranges, which is z, so four z. And two pounds of strawberries, which is two x, equals $18.60. Then I write my augmented matrix. So these are one, one, one. 
1, 2, 2, 10.85, 2, 3, 4, 1860, and I put it in my matrix. So second plus 712, once again, that just clears it. So second matrix, edit, 3 by 4. So 1, 1, 1, 6.5, 1, 2, 2, 1, 0 0.85, and make sure it's all right, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, so this is 2, 3, 4, and then 6.5, 10.5, and this is 18.6. Quit out of it, second mode, second matrix, math, go to RF, second matrix, enter, enter, and we get 2.15, 3.1, and 1.25. So it says use a cal graphing calculator to determine the price per pound. So uh, price per pound of strawberries. Mm, sorry. Is what do we say? Two dollars and fifteen cents. The price per pound of pears is going to be three dollars and ten cents. And last, the price per pound of oranges is going to be one dollar and 25 cents so really quickly once again so the first one is two dollars fifteen cents for strawberries three dollars and ten cents for pears one dollar and twenty five cents for um oranges